We begin today with the news that Russia says it's resuming its participation in the Ukraine grain deal that has allowed vital food shipments to depart the country over the last few weeks. The Kremlin backed down just days after pulling out of the agreement, citing a Ukrainian attack on Russia's naval base in the Crimea. Moscow says it has now received sufficient guarantees from Kiev on the demilitarization of a maritime corridor. Thanks to the participation of the United Nations and Turkey's assistance, we were able to get the necessary written guarantees from the Ukrainian side about not using the humanitarian shipping corridor and Ukrainian ports designated for the export of agricultural products for military actions against the Russian Federation. Meanwhile, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says the corridor for exporting grain requires reliable and long-term defense. As Russian forces continue to strike Ukrainian cities and target the country's energy facilities, authorities in the Ukrainian capital are now preparing more than 1,000 heating points for members of the public across the city. Ukrainian officials say Russian attacks have damaged 40 percent of Ukraine's energy infrastructure. Kiev officials are planning to equip the heating points with generators and necessities, including water. Ukraine's first lady, Olena Zelenskaya, urged tech workers from around the world to help save people in Ukraine. You have the power to determine the direction in which this world moves. After all, the dystopias we read about in science fiction novels and the threats of their destruction, of life destruction, are much closer than you think. We felt it in Ukraine because of Russian terror. Because Russia puts technology at the service of terror. For more on this, I'm joined by Yusuf Erim, senior analyst with Turkey's international news channel, TRT World. He joins us live from Istanbul in Turkey, I should say. Uh, and Yusuf, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being with us today. Uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan set, said earlier in the week uh, that he was going to work to try and bring this uh, grain deal back into force. Uh, I presume this news means that he's succeeded. Uh, well, it looks like the grain deal is back on track. Uh, the Turkish president announced just a little while ago uh, that the grain deal resumed around nine GMT uh, as of today. So uh, the deal is back on. But what we're hearing from the Russian side is that uh, this resumption of operations in the Black Sea as part of the grain initiative does not necessarily mean an extension. Now, uh, the deadline uh, to renew the grain deal is midnight uh november 18th so uh once again in two weeks this deal is going to be have to be renewed the russians still have some concerns that need to be ironed out uh in negotiations with the united nations and uh with turkey as well but it seems that the temporary halt that suspension of participation for now has been lifted What do we know about uh, the details of the demilitarized corridor that uh, the Russians said they'd received uh, assurances about during the course of these conversations? Well, what, what we're seeing right now is it's under investigation, the attack uh, on Sevastopol. The Russians are saying that the grain corridor was used for the alleged attack uh, against their naval assets in that area. But uh, again, the Ukrainian side denying it, the United Nations saying the Green Corridor wasn't used for a military strike as well. So it's basically at this point a uh, uh, finger pointing and a he said, she said, uh, until we have a thorough, uh, thorough independent investigation of what happened there. But uh, it looks like going forward, the Russians are gonna wanna see more security guarantees, uh, most likely by either Turkey or the United Nations uh, to be able to assure them and ease their security concerns uh, regarding uh, what's going on in that area known as the Grain Corridor in the Black Sea, that it's not being used uh, for any type of uh, military operations. 
And Yusuf, with the clock now ticking uh, as far as uh, the extension of the existing agreement is concerned, uh, is Turkey going to be uh, the interlocutor that brokers those conversations? Does President Erdogan intend to remain fully engaged in this? Yes, from uh, what we understand, looking at the rhetoric coming from Ankara, the Turkish president, along with uh, the UN Secretary General, they're going to continue their cooperation on uh, mediating an extension of this deal. We've seen comments coming from both the United Nations and from Turkey uh, that they are engaged in diplomacy, trying to extend this deal. Uh, I was in Brussels at a conference just earlier this week, and uh, I heard the Ukrainian Deputy Minister of Infrastructure speaking there, and he was saying that he wants to see the, the, see the deal extended, not for four-month increments, but now for a one-year increment. Uh, the Russians obviously have their concerns. They want to see their concerns addressed in a new extension as well. So there's still a lot of diplomacy. Turkey is still part of this process. Uh, the Turkish president spoke with Vladimir Putin yesterday. He's expected to speak with the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, in the coming days. So that could either be later on today, uh, quite possibly tomorrow, the day after. But uh, a conversation with the Ukrainian president uh, on the agenda and going to happen quite soon uh, that's the expectation. Well, we'll keep tabs on it, Yusuf. I know you will be as well. I hope you'll come back and give us an update in a few days' time. That's Yusuf Erem, senior analyst with Turkey, Turkey's international news channel, TRT World, joining us live today from Istanbul.